um, let's tell you a little bit more about new narrative. Um, what is what is new narrative? So I'm going to talk about the journalistic as aspect of it. Um, as I said earlier, I, my background has been in news. Um, I've been in the news industry um, in various positions, from a journalist to an editor to a sub-editor, for 18 years. So when I first started out, I was uh, a journalist with the Foreign Wires based in Kuala Lumpur. And I remember one of the first things that I covered for work was, um, some of you may remember it, I'm not sure if all of you were born at that time, you would be, but um, then Deputy Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim was fired and his sacking and his jailing launched the reformasi movement in Kuala Lumpur. So I remember being a, a young, impressionable reporter at that time, working for the foreign wires. Um, the good thing about that was the foreign agencies do give you a little bit more freedom and uh, to express um, uh, realities on the ground. But what really struck me, surprisingly, was not that we could cover freely about Anwar's reformacy movement when my colleagues in the local media could not. That, that actually didn't stand out to me as strange. What stood out to me was, after reading countless and writing countless reports about Anwar, about the reformacy movement, it occurred to me that people were conveniently forgetting the fact that here's a man that the Western world, uh, generally, were... Uh, he was the darling. Yeah, in the eyes of the Western world, the one man poised to take down a dictator in the form of Dr. Mahathir. And that was repeated throughout. It was a theme for all the coverage of, from the foreign wires. Um, people were forgetting, or people were conveniently not interested in telling the story of how this same man was not too long ago um, part of the establishment. Uh, most of us who grew up in Malaysia, who were interested in politics um, prior to Anwar sacking, um, we were well aware of the fact that in order to rise in the ranks of the ruling party, you needed to be um, racist. You know, there's no other way to sugarcoat that. And Anwar was no different. But if you were to Google search it today, Anwar racist comments, you find next to nothing about that. So it was conveniently wiped out from his history. But it was something that I felt was important to portray a person as he is. Okay, um, everybody has a past, he can move on from that. But to eliminate that past because it didn't conveniently fit into the image that the international audience wanted of Anwar, that to me was uh, a bit of a letdown. Yeah, so I started my journalism career with a little bit of a, a downer. But that's where we have new narrative. Written for Southeast Asians by Southeast Asians. We know the stories because they're not stories for us. They're not articles that we read in the paper. We live it, you know, we go through it every day. Um, but, and we need to have that right to tell those stories which is something that we will aim very much to do with our coverage of news, of features of Southeast Asia in your narrative. Um, another downside to having the foreign wires or foreign agencies covering Southeast Asia, from my experience, was the need to keep everything within a 600-word limit. Um, there's really not much that you can say with 600 words. So what happens is you have to summarize you have to simplify, and what you do is you just write something that you know your readers or your company wants to hear. Because there's not much room for explanation, there's not much room for depth. Um, so in New Narrative, we aim to have long-form feature articles um, where we hope that the length of our articles will not be a deterrent, but in fact the opposite, will compel you to want to know the story within the story. And with that, I am now going to introduce our next speaker. Please put your hands together for Ms. Kirsten Hunt.